I'm sure welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Seth. In this video, I'm going to give an answer to one of the questions most people have been asking me. And that has to do with the fact that um, they would want to come to the UK to do their master's degree or PhD. Um, they want to know how to go about it. Um, I have a special person in here who has gone through the process and uh, I'm going to ask him a series of questions. I believe that I mean, there are some questions on your mind you would like to ask and I'm here to ask those questions for you, okay? Um, I wouldn't want to introduce him now, but if you're interested in this video, I would want you to just um, watch this video to the end and get to know this special person. I mean, you're going to learn a great deal of information here. So if you're interested, why don't you come with me as we look at that? Officially welcome you. Um, all I do on this channel is very simple. I share my life experience and the processes that one has to go through to come to the UK to work or study. Um, in this video, as I said, I've got a special person here. I'll give him the chance to introduce himself, but I'll just say something little about him. He's one special person who is well versed in, I mean, helping um, young African nurses come to the UK to um, pursue their master's degree and then PhD. Um, He's a staff nurse, as I said, and um, he's got a lot of information to share with you. Um, I'll allow him to talk or introduce myself. I wouldn't, I mean, speak for him. Okay, so, um, my brother, welcome to my channel. Thank you. All right, so um, this is the first time um, this gentleman is coming to my channel. I'm very much excited. So how do you uh, prefer to be called? Okay. Oh, you can just call me Albert. All right, Albert, okay. I need to be um, Albert Adro. Right? Yes, okay. so, that's but fine. Albert is fine by me. Okay. okay, that's fine. How long have you been in the UK? Um, I've been in the UK for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. um, so I came here um, in June, last year June. So, well, not so long, right? <laughs> I think um, you've adjusted so well to the point that I mean, you're able to help um, some young African nurses come here to pursue their degrees and their master's program. I hope that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I believe that you're going to get a good deal of information in this video because he's got um, tons of information to share here. Okay, so I would like to ask some few questions. I believe uh, my audience would like to, I think they have met you in person. Okay, so let's say I want to come to the UK to do my master's degree, or let's say I hold a diploma degree back in my country, and I want to come here and do my uh, master's degree or PhD. How do I go about it? Oh, sad. Okay, so um, if you want to come to the UK with to do a, to pursue, a, let's say a course in nursing specifically, we are talking about nursing, right? Yeah. Good. So if you want to come to the UK to pursue um, a course in nursing, you have to first believe in yourself that you can reach your potential if only you are um, determined. That's the first thing. And everyone can come to the UK, but um, it depends on where you are going and why you are coming to the UK. So if you are a nurse in Ghana, Nigeria, wherever you are, India, wherever you are, and you want to pursue a nursing career or a course in the United Kingdom, you would have to have a certain certificate. It could be a diploma certificate or a degree certificate. And diploma meaning you are coming to pursue a degree course in the United Kingdom or degree you are coming to pursue master's is that all right? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So let me interfere. Does that mean that if um, someone holds the certificate program, because you know in Ghana we have um, certificates, diploma holders, and then uh, degree holders. So if someone has a certificate um, qualification, does that mean that you or she can't pursue this course? Well, um, we will make a, I think we should make a video on um, people with certificate. Um, they can also come to the UK because currently we have policies in place now for them okay. but um, for those with a certificate um, for those with a diploma certificate and um, for those with um, de degree certificates who are in the in um, Africa or who are in India or other parts of Europe you can come to the UK yes you can come the only thing you have to do is just to search for the universities that you want in the UK so the UK has several universities we have University of Plymouth University of Sutherland University of London University of Manchester Cambridge Oxford a whole lot of universities but then it's not all of them that um, taking international students so you have to find out those that take international students 
for those um, coming in with um, diploma certificate, meaning you have to pursue a degree in UK. So if you want to pursue a degree course, you have to first apply to one of these universities. And when you apply to the university, um, you would have to send them an email, that's the way to apply. Okay. And then they'll give you a feedback. Okay. All right, so um, if I understood you so well, um, what this means is that, um, I mean, there are certain universities that allow international students in the UK. So you have to, first of all, you have to make research about those universities before you start applying, right? Okay. So now let's look at um, the requirement. Let's say I have found a university in Manchester or Sunderland and I want to come here and pursue my diploma or degree, um, sorry, my degree or uh, PhD program. Um, what are the requirements um, I would have to um, have at my disposal before I can pursue this course? Any university that you want to attend, you will need um, some certificates. For instance, if it's nursing, you would need um, your nursing certificate, you will need a transcript, you will need um, a police clearance since you are coming into someone's country. And so you, if you are coming into the country, aside those that I've mentioned, you would need um, a CV as well. That depends on some of the universities, but not all of them. Majority of them do not require a CV or something like that. So if you have your money, which is your tuition, this you will be able to know when you search or you try to get to know about the universities, how they are going, how their tuition fee is and all that. You also have to find out whether they give a sponsorship and then this will help you in what you have to present. So if it's a university that's a sponsoring, you don't need a CV, you don't need um, a lot of money because you don't need um, tuition fee. You only have to get your um, police clearance, your diploma um, certificate or your degree certificate and then it should you should be fine. And also not forgetting an email, you should have a good email <laughs> because if your email is um, inaccessible or if it's something that you don't really use, then there's no need for you to use it. So these are the things that I think you would, you should need. These are the basic things that as a person you should have to be able to apply for a university course. So um, with regards to the sponsorship, it's not all the university that actually um, give out sponsoring things like that. So um, I don't mention names, but then some of the universities do not give um, this good thing. They give bursaries. Others do not give anything at all. They, they won't give you anything. So you just have to use your own money to pay for your way through until you get to the UK. Okay. Yeah. So if um, you want to come to the UK now, let's look at this. If you want to come to the UK, you have your diploma set, you have your police clearance, you have um, all your other details, um, such as your certificates, your countries. Um, registration certificate, whether it's a registered general nurse or um, your NMC certificate and all that. When you have all those things, including your transcript from your school, then you can apply. So you will need to write an exam, which is for the immigration purpose as well. Okay, so um, what's that, what type of exam? Is it the English proficiency test we know? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is an interesting question. But then, um, so everyone out there, if you want to come to the UK to school, as in specifically schooling, you would need to write um, a UKVI academic, a UKVI academic. But the good news is that um, even if you don't write a UKVI academic IELTS, you can write OET. If you do not want to write OET or IELTS, you can um, bring out an approved letter from your school and it will be accepted. So if, let's say you are in Ghana, because I'm from Ghana, so if you are in Ghana or if you are in Nigeria, you have to, um, and you schooled in a nursing school or university, you have to go back to them, tell them to give you a letter that shows that you were trained and taught in English language. And if they're able to give you this letter, then you can forward it as a substitute for the IELTS or the OET. Okay, so does that mean that 
I mean, you can come to the UK to pursue your master's degree or PhD with or without IELTS. Yes, with or without IELTS. And all you have to do is you just go to your school, I mean, your institution, and uh, get a letter from them indicating that you are taught in English. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And um, so when you are done, um, getting all this basic requirement is key for you to present you can because the school most of them do not actually ask for um, a specific thing all we do say is give us your certificate so these are the certificates that i'm talking about so if you have any certificates that correlate with nursing you can submit it alongside all this that i have mentioned as well and okay. you have to send them an email apply online and then you would get an email from them yeah okay um this is great um i think you are enjoying this video i mean the content in here is very very educative um there's another question i'd like to ask um let's see i mean the person has had the opportunity to um get admission into um, this university coming here to do um let's say um master's degree now how many years um is it going to take for him to be awarded that kind of family certificate okay so um i want to cover it in this way so if you want to come um into the united kingdom and you're having a, a diploma certificate you are coming in here to do a degree course and a degree course is for a year and um some of the universities would say it's for nine months and we do it according to models so we have each month and the model so month one it's module A, month two is module B for nine months or depending on the university for a year. Then if you are coming to the UK, majority of the universities will let you do the masters. That is if you have a degree, will let you do the masters for two years and others will make it one and a half. Um, I seldom see some of the universities allowing people to come and do masters for a year. No. So. Um, that is it. So if you are coming to the UK, this is how long the course is going to take. All right. Um, I would like to ask another question. Yeah. Um, so let's say I finished with my master's degree. Well, let's say I couldn't write the IELTS, so I had to let my institution um, verify me that I was taught in English. So once I finish my degree program or um, PhD, do I have the chance to work in a certified hospital as a nurse? or as a midwife i mean how is that one like because i didn't write the IELTS. i mean how do you explain that well the good news is that you can and you cannot so mm -hmm. for the you can it depends on you the individual and for the you cannot it depends on you the individual ask me why so the thing is if you are done with your degree for a year or for nine months or if you are done with your masters remember if you came into the university with an IELTS certificate and you had a band score above seven or seven and above, a total band score of seven and above, with um, your listening being um, seven, reading being seven, writing being 6.5 and above, um, your others being seven, or the OET being C plus and above, or your approved letter, so now focusing on the IELTS and the COET, if you get the required one for the NMC, immediately you are done with your schooling, you would need that certificate and you would need to write a CBT, which is part of the UK NMC process. You need to write that exams. Those two would help you gain your pain in the university. Uh, in, in, as a professional nurse, in the UK as a professional nurse. Okay, so um, what you mean is that if the applicant was fortunate to have written the IELTS yeah. before applying to the university yeah. um, you or she can use that resource especially yes. if you had the right I mean yeah. um, resource like yes so if you have the course. right result yes so if you have the right results for the um, NMC process you can use that IELTS or OET um, test paper or results for your NMC process to become a registered nurse in the UK or your OET but if you if um, you came in to the university into the university with the approved letter. It means you now have to. But you know what? In 2022, the government has created a new channel and that is you can use the university um, awarded certificates to apply 
So this is a new thing that's in 2022. You can just talk about well, it. Let me let me let me get this yeah. <laughs> So let's say um the person has finished with the master's degree. Yeah. And has been given the educational qualification. Yeah. For, yeah as a certificate. Yeah. Um, the person can use that as a proof of yeah. English proficiency. Yes. And that he, you or she wouldn't have to write the higher to No, no. Oh, that's a good it, news. Yes, that's a good news. And that's then you news. have to use, um, but then the CBT, you still have to write right. the CBT. Okay. And then when you're done with the CBT, you have to go ahead and write your OSCE. Going for uh, a lot of um, hospitals when you are done with the university, or you can just apply to any of the agencies for them to aid you or assist you into getting any hospital of your choice in the United Kingdom. Again, um, when you come into the university, um, you have to pay for your own. Before coming to the university, you have to pay for your own accommodation. This is something that you, the candidate, must pay for. Oh, okay. You must also um, know that you are the one sponsoring yourself, unless it's the university decided to sponsor you or give you a bursary. So you have to sponsor yourself. Most of the universities' um, tuition fee ranges between uh, ten thousand to thirteen thousand per, oh. per year. Yes, wow. it's 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 not too huge when you are living in the United Kingdom, but it's huge when you are not here. Yeah, <laughs> and the good news <laughs> is that you can come to the university. Yes, you can, even without having money. Ask me why. This mm -hmm. is because. The investors are so generous to the extent that they don't allow you to pay all the tuition fees until you come. Okay. You just have to pay one third of the amount and then everything will be settled. So if you pay one third of the amount, for instance, if you are coming to University of Sutherland or University of London, you just have to pay one third of the amount, which is equivalent to £3,500. So if you're able to pay this amount, um, they will be able to issue you your certificate of sponsorship and then you can come to the UK. But they might do you are the one going to pay for your flight and your visa. This is because, and your TB test, this is because um, you are sponsoring yourself to come, unless the university decides to sponsor you. Okay. All right. I think um, we give you much of information in here. And I mean, those who would want to come here and then pursue their master's degree or PhD have um, gotten up in the tail of it. I think we'll have to end here. Um, I would want us to do another video which has to do with, I mean, the aftermath of having your master's degree. So let's say you have your master's degree and you're going to zoom into nursing in the UK. I mean, I mean, you said a little bit about it, but I would want us to do an in-depth video about it so that people get to know how to um, use their qualification yeah. to apply for yeah. a job um, in here. Yeah, and so, before we end, with the masters, one good news about it is unlike the coming to pursue a degree here in the UK, with the masters, you can bring your family along. Oh, okay. This is the good That's news good about news. it. Yeah. And one thing that we have to know is that when you are done with the schooling, the government gives you two years for you to stay in the United Kingdom. But as a nurse, if you're able to, within the two years, if you're able to secure yourself a job, and you definitely would be able to secure yourself a job because there are numerous um hospitals looking for nurses so there is no way you would say i think i couldn't find any hospital to work with it's impossible okay. in the uk so immediately you you come into the uk you are done with the schooling you will be able to get a job and when you get a job the two year that you're supposed to stay in yeah, is no longer which will be extended, will be extended by the hospital so yeah, you don't have to worry about yeah, it mm -hmm. so this is basically about coming into the UK to pursue a degree or a master's program. But then it goes in depth, so I think our next video will definitely yeah. cover a lot yeah. about this one. All right, I think we'll end here. Um, Albert, I'm very much grateful <laughs> for coming to my channel. I really appreciate that. Um, you've educated my, um, I mean, the audience a lot, and I believe that they are going to take action. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope to see you on my channel. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. So, um, <laughs> what I would say is that if you have never subscribed to this channel, make sure you're hitting the subscribe button right under this video. So, that I mean, um, anytime this, um, the next video drops, you'll be the first person to get it. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. And I will thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you too. Really <laughs> okay. So, I'll um, see you in our next video. See you. Bye. Bye.